Hello, and thank you again for joining us today on another Lakehead University uh, Wednesday Weekly. This is a part of the Lakehead International Live series, a series where Lakehead International is going live every day, um, Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we have scheduled these fun and informative sessions so that we're available to our uh, future students as well as our current students and anyone who's interested in Lakehead as well as our applicants, of course. Um, so these sessions are meant to be an open period for you to ask questions, get updates from us, but also learn more about Lakehead. Um, so Wednesday weeklies are focused around admissions updates, so we do have our undergraduate and graduate team joining us today, as well as a few other special guests from International to speak on other questions. Behind the scenes, we have Lakehead experts answering questions uh, throughout the entire webinar. If you are joining us on Facebook, you can also comment your question and we'd be happy to answer uh, via that that process. Um, if you are watching this as a recording, I would like to remind you um, that you, you're still encouraged to comment on the recorded video and we are monitoring those channels after the fact to answer those questions for you. So um, to begin today, I, I just wanted to introduce everyone to Lakehead University. Um, so we are a fully comprehensive university here in Thunder Bay as well as in Aurelia in Ontario, Canada. Um, so for those students that also have general questions about Lakehead University, even though today's focus is admissions update, I do encourage you to ask us general questions too because we're happy to answer those. Um, so I would like to begin by opening the floor to our participants, our viewers. Um, if you do have questions for our undergraduate or graduate admissions team, please feel free by submitting questions now through the Q&A function. Um, as well, if you have any questions just about Lakehead in general, please submit through the Q&A function. And like I said before, if you're joining us live on Facebook, you can comment on that video. If you're watching this as a recording, you can also comment on uh, that channel and then we'll be happy to get back to you as soon as we can. Um, so I see a few questions uh, in there open here now. Um, Alrighty, so the first question, my loan process is delaying due to COVID-19, what should I do for that? Um, so I will pass this one off to Robert and he will be able to speak to uh, the procedures that we have in place for payments already and then what, what our advice and recommendations are for students that are looking to secure loans for their education. Thanks, Jordan. Um, so thanks so much for that question. Um, we obviously understand that we're currently going through um, a very unprecedented time and a number of systems around the world, including banking systems, access to banks, all of that have been delayed. And so essentially our best advice is basically to, um, to obviously continue to uh, pursue your loan and whatever planning you have, but to, to advise us and let us know. So for instance, if you are uh, not gonna be able to pay your deposit or you are going to be delayed in paying that tuition fee, things of that nature, um, you should reach out to the respective admission offices to let them know what that status is. You can still accept an offer though, so if you can still tell us that you intend to come and that you're interested in that spot, and that's an important indicator for us to know, um, you know, to tell the university and say, by the way, I do want to come, uh, but then this is my my personal situation that is impacting my ability to reach those, those next steps. We are going to be flexible when it comes to things like deadlines for deposit, things of that nature. Uh, and so, um, so in, in that respect, as long as you keep us informed, um, then we can work with you based on your individual circumstances to both in, you know, know that you plan to come uh, and start studying with Lakehead this fall, for example, um, but at the same time, you may be experiencing a delay. You know, the best advice that I give to everyone is just keep us informed. Let us know what is happening. Let us know what challenges you may be facing and the university as always with you know whether it's COVID-19 or any other you know situation Lakehead prides itself on working directly to support our students and to help you through whatever you may be experiencing so so again, the key thing is we need to know, number one, if you are planning to start with us this fall, that's really important from a planning standpoint. But secondly, then we need to know what barriers you may be encountering. So the other thing to know is just, uh, since we're talking about things like deposits and such, um, the university has implemented um, a, um, a guarantee of a refund on deposits if for some reason a student cannot start university due to COVID-19 this fall. So we want to provide you with assurance that if, 
you pay your deposit, you confirm your spot, but for whatever reason, the situation with COVID-19 has not improved, you're not able to come to Canada if, let's say, classes are, are in person in the fall, um, you can't get a study permit, whatever the situation may be, number one, we'll work with you to find an alternate start date. So let's say you had an offer for the fall, we will look to see, okay, when could you potentially start and any monies you've paid would automatically transition with you into that new start date or alternately if there's just absolutely no way for you to come we want you to feel confident and trust that we would then refund that deposit so we are providing those assurances given the situation um, but a key part of that is communication and letting us know what's happening so uh, again we're happy to support and help where we can uh, but just be in touch with us about that Awesome. And while I have you, Robert, for the next question, we actually have um, a student that's concerned about the online instruction. So the question is, after carefully looking into the scenarios of COVID-19, um, I understood that fall 2020 for Masters in Computer Science is going to be an online class um, or online learning. Could you speak to any decisions that have been made? So yeah, so, so to be clear, the fall 2020 uh, semester, there has not been a decision or an announcement regarding whether or not classes will be in person or online. So just to make sure we're clear, what has been decided is that the spring semester, so the semester that starts in May, in all classes will be delivered online. Now online learning looks a number of different ways. The courses can take place in a number of different formats. The most common format is that we use a, a learning platform called D2L, and this is a, a one of the, the best platforms in the world that exists for online learning. It is an entire online community. You log in through the internet. You're able to take part in the courses that are happening. There could be live lectures going on. We use um, uh, tools like Zoom. So what you're currently witnessing us, you can see how you can hear me, you can see me, you can imagine your professor or would be like me talking to you, delivering materials. You can see slides and information that's being posted. Jordan has uh, a things to remember slide that's currently being broadcast. So you can see that. So professors are able to still deliver their lectures, um, are able to deliver content, uh, rich content, uh, enhanced content even. So um, in the learning classroom environment, um, students are getting access to more materials, more options even through there as well. So it's even in some cases, sometimes it's an enhanced way to learn as well. You as a student, 100% will be learning uh, through your online courses. You will be able to complete your assignments. You'll be able to take part in classes ask your questions, get feedback from your from your professors, from your teaching assistants. So you will still be able to have um, a university class experience. You will still be learning um, uh, through online learning. It isn't, you know, online learning is, is just, it's just a different format, uh, but you'll be doing that from the comfort of your home. So you just won't be in Canada necessarily sitting in a classroom. Lakehead University has been delivering online courses for many, many years. It's not like this is the first time we've ever done it, just the scale of this. So in terms of how many of our classes are being delivered online is, is the big difference here. But in terms of quality, in terms of receiving your proper university courses, in terms of your ability to learn, absolutely you will still be able to do that through Lakehead, uh, through online alternate modes of delivery. It will be different, of course, absolutely. It's going to be a different experience. But if you imagine, as as you are preparing to go out into the modern workforce, and we all know that the world of work is changing, one of the things that you're going to be expected to do is to be able to be technologically savvy, to be able to engage through online platforms, online communications, our, our interconnected global world um, survives and thrives based on things like this type of learning and inter interactivity. So by starting off your education in that format, in one could argue you and I believe that in fact you'll be advantaged because of it because you're going to have a chance to to experience those tools to become a master of those tools even before you go to enter into the workforce and you can imagine the value that you'll bring to any future organization when you graduate to be able to say look at what I just went through I, I, I embarked on my university studies in a different format um, I succeeded in that format 
And therefore, uh, I'm even more well prepared to help lead an organization, uh, help a company through, through, uh, through alternate ways of, of perhaps delivering their services. The one other assurance I wanna provide is that in addition to taking your courses, doing your assignments, your examinations, all of that through online, um, just because you're online in your home um, does not mean that you are limited in terms of the services and supports that you receive. So at Lakehead, all of our support services, all of our student offices, whether it be um, academic advising, whether it be study skills development, you know, helping you as a student be successful, our, our, our math center, writing centers, you know, those service providers that you would expect to have when you're on campus, you still have full access to all of those services online. So all of the university support services have been moved into an online alternate delivery mode. So as a student, you can still get those supports, you will still receive those supports, and they are actually offering new supports to be able to help students transition into an online mode of learning. So we're there to help you. At Lakehead, we want to see you succeed, and we're doing everything we can to help you uh, be successful uh, as you start your, your university years with us. Awesome. Thank you so much for the in-depth answer, Robert. Uh, the next question I'll pass off is to uh, graduate studies, and that is Sue today. Um, the question is, I have applied for master's in computer science a few months ago for fall 2020 entry, and they haven't heard back from Lakehead. Uh, could you speak to how the offers work within computer science, Sue? Sure, thanks Jordan. I would like to assure anyone who is listening today who has applied to computer science and has not received a response that we are working very diligently to process those applications. We do expect our computer science department to make decisions on all files by the end of May at early June at the latest. And we know this is a little bit later than usual. However, due to the COVID situation and people transitioning to work from home, we needed a little bit more time with that. We do appreciate your patience. This was one of our largest programs for international applications. And so we do appreciate your patience um, in, in working with us. They are sending out rounds of offer as we speak. So every week we're sending out a new batch of offers. Um, the most up-to-date information be, can be found by logging into your My Info and looking at your status there. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sue. Um, so the next question comes from a student with regards to our um, Monday meetup. For, for those of you that don't know, uh, this week on our Monday meetup, we actually covered residence living. So I had three wonderful residence services staff members join me, as well as Patrick, uh, an international recruitment officer live, and we chatted all about living on campus, what that looks like, meal plans, options as, as well. We did briefly touch on off-campus options, um, but the question is with regards to um, Wi-Fi provided on, on, on campus residents. So um, for any of our students that are interested in living on, on campus options, whether it's in Thunder Bay, in residence halls, apartments, townhouses, or in our Aurelia accommodations on campus, I can guarantee and confirm that we do offer free Wi-Fi to all of our students living on campus. As well, um, in our rooms, there is options to have actual hardwired Ethernet connections. Um, the, the, the question does extend further into the bandwidth restrictions. To my knowledge, there are no bandwidth restrictions um, for on-campus students, but I do encourage you, if you would like to uh, confirm those details with our resident services team, you can find their contact information online if you visit lakeview.ca forward slash residents. Um, their contact information is listed there and they'd be happy to address any particular questions with regards to the Wi-Fi that they offer their students. And the next two questions um, are strategically placed, actually both about scholarships, about both levels though. So the first one is um, with regards to master's students and scholarships that are available before they arrive. Um, and then the second question is, are there any scholarships for post-secondary school applicants into undergraduate studies? So I'll pass that one off to Amanda Mejia, and she will speak to scholarship opportunities for both grad and undergrad. Thank you for those questions. Um, yeah, it's great to see that we got them for both uh, the graduate and undergraduate. So I'll talk about those independently. So let's talk about graduate funding. Um, graduate funding is limited. So, um, but we do understand the importance of, you know, maybe getting some financial support. Um, I encourage you to visit our website at 
uh, www.lakeheadu.ca slash graduate dash funding. Um, there you'll see different options. So we do have uh, options for bursaries and scholarships based on academic promise, um, but you can also find graduate assistantships and uh, faculty research scholarships. Um, if you have received a faculty research scholarship, you would be um, communicating uh, with your faculty regarding that. Um, so you should be already be in contact with your professor and have some information about that. Um, in terms of undergraduate scholarships, so uh, you are automatically considered, so students who have applied and received an offer, you should have received your offer um, for an undergraduate scholarship should you have a um, a specific average. So we have average, uh, we have scholarships starting at 75%. So if you have an overall average of 75% to 79%, you're going to see that offer saying $4,000 Canadian, okay? That would be distributed in your first year only. If you have an 80 to an 89%, you will be getting 5,000 per year. So that would be distributed in two instances throughout the year. So first semester and second semester. And if you have a 90 or above, um, you will get 7,500 per year. Again, 50% uh, of that will be released in your first semester and 50% of that will be released in your second semester. Um, if you have any questions, please, please feel free to reach out to our admissions team. Awesome, and for those um, on our Zoom right now, if you are on Zoom, the links to both the graduate funding page as well as our undergraduate scholarships and awards page are posted in the chat, uh, so it's simple and clickable right within there so I do encourage you to uh, visit those websites if you are interested in learning more. Just as Amanda said if you do have any questions regarding the scholarships um, you're more than encouraged to reach out to us directly via either social media channels or the email at the bottom of your screen which is welcome at lakeheadu.ca that is international enrollment it's a general email um, it gives our our students the ability to reach out to us um, and then we can connect you with the proper department if we don't have the answers, uh, but we are monitoring it on a regular basis. So we do hope that if you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us and we will get back to you in uh, a timely fashion. So the next question I have is quite large and it will be for Robert. It is with regards to immigration. Um, so I will read the question for all of our viewers so they have a full understanding of um, what the question is and then I'll have Robert answer that. So considering the present pandemic situation, uh, there has been a lockdown in India that is scheduled up until May 7th right now. Um, and of course, it's unsure as to when that lockdown will finally lift. Um, and in that case, applying for immigration has uh, arisen some concerns for this student. And so they were just wondering if Lake has considered these situations about deferring admissions to the next term um, and kind of what the process looks like for that. Hi, Jordan. Thanks for that. So, um, so let's just clarify a few things. So, of course, we're 100% aware of what's going on. We have been monitoring this situation actually for a number of months, because as you can appreciate, the pandemic actually started uh, many months ago, while it's reached North America and other countries a little bit later. Um, but it's certainly something that's been our, on our radar for some time. So in terms of, uh, number one, before we are able to sort of provide any assurances around deferrals and things like that at this stage of the game, we need to know what the situation is for this upcoming fall. So what we know is is that um, for students that had a spring start, so some programs offered a spring start, if for some reason they wish to defer to a fall start, we've already provided that opportunity uh, and that has happened. For those students who are planning to start their courses in the fall, uh, until we know what the final situation is regarding the fall, and that meaning whether or not it's in-person classes or online delivery or some blend of the two, we don't yet know what that looks like, um, then we will make sort of some of those additional decisions. What I can assure you is, is that at the end of the day, Lakehead is going to work with our students to provide you with the best possibility, the best option available for you. That may mean that we will be providing the opportunity to defer your start from the fall to January. So January for us, we call that our winter term. So that would be January of 2021. But it's still too early. We're still a few weeks away from knowing that answer. So again, we are watching the situation every day. Um, the university in Ontario are all 
talking together. We're all making sure that we're on the same page. And I would expect that we will see some uh, announcements in the coming weeks that will clarify what is happening when it comes to the fall 2020 startup um, uh, for that. What I can assure you though today is that it, you can still accept your offer of admission to the university for the fall. You can pay your deposits. And if for some reason you cannot start in the fall, you will be able to, we will work with you to look at when the next available start term is. Uh, programs are examining whether or not, even if they haven't offered a winter intake in the past, so a January start, they will be looking at if that's a possibility. You know, again, all of these things are sort of up in the air. And once we have a picture of what the fall looks like, then we'll be in a better position to know for sure. Now, with regards, though, to visas and applying for your visas, as, as you've indicated, a number of visa application centers are in fact closed right now, and we, we understand that. Um, however, to apply for a visa, that is all done online. So you can still continue with your visa application process. You can work on, behind the scenes, work on submitting the documents that are required. And my recommendation and what we're asking students is do not delay that. Continue to apply. Um, apply for your visa like you normally would. Get whatever you can so far into the um, to the visa application center. Uh, and then when those offices start to reopen, then will be the time to do those things that have to happen in person. So typically that's the submission of your medical health checks. So you have to do that, your examination. And then of course the collection of your biometrics, which has to be done in person as well. Now, I can assure you, you know, well, um, as you can appreciate around the world, the state of the pandemic is different depending on what region of the world you're in and when the pandemic sort of reached that market. So, you know, one thing I know is that there are really positive signs in the world that while some areas of the world are struggling and, and facing this in a very intensive way, Canada is not immune. We are a part of that as well. But we have seen, for instance, in China now, now that they are so so much farther ahead in the pandemic, that things like places like the, the, the visa application centers, they're actually starting to reopen. And so now students in China, for instance, are able to start to do the things that they hadn't been able to do even a month ago. So the good news is, is that we know that eventually this will pass. While we are all facing a very challenging time right now, eventually this will pass and we will start to be able to do these things. What is most important is, is that, you know, is trying to remain uh, positive, looking ahead and having a plan for the future and knowing that in time you will will be able to get into that visa application center. You will be able to, to do those things once again. Even if today we don't know when that's going to be, we know it's going to come. So my advice always is act with the most positive intention. Uh, if your goal is I want to start university in the fall of 2020, do everything you can now with that intention. And then if we find out that things are looking a bit differently, Lakehead will be here for you and we will work with you to find the next best option for you. So, um, so, so keep up, um, you know, keep up the, the spirits and, um, and like I said, continue to, to, to move forward in the process. And once we know a clear picture of what the fall looks like, we'll be in a better position to know what the deferrals will look like for fall admission. Awesome, thank you so much. <clears throat> so the next question I have here is for Natalie in undergraduate admissions. The question is, I have applied for software engineering in undergraduate studies. I have not been notified about the admissions decision yet. Uh, and it's been over a week. So I'll let Natalie speak to timelines within uh, applications for engineering at the undergraduate level. Sure, thanks Jordan. Um, so what I would recommend is that you send us a quick email. Our email address is on the screen there that, that Jordan has shared, intl.admission at lakehead.ca. And I would be more than happy to look into your specific case to determine if there are any documents missing, if we had to send your application to the faculty 
Faculty of Engineering for an assessment. Um, times do vary if your application has been sent directly to the faculty for an assessment. So as it has only been one week, if your file is with them, I usually encourage the applicant that we can follow up if we haven't received a decision from them, usually around the two week mark. Um, but again, like I said, I can definitely look into your specific case. If you send me an email, I can look to see if that application was sent to the Faculty of Engineering or if there are any missing documents for your application. Awesome. Thank you so much, Natalie, for clarification. Um, and this is a really great opportunity to actually uh, kind of mention the items on the screen that I hadn't previously talked about. Um, I encourage, of course, I'm sure you've probably read them already. Um, but if you do have any questions specific to our admissions team, um, if you're on the undergraduate side of uh, pursuing education, it is intl.admission at lakehandu.ca. And if you are pursuing a graduate studies uh, level of education, you can email our graduate admissions team at gstudent at lakehandu.ca. Um, of course, I do still encourage if you have questions though, uh, while we have them live with us today, they've devoted an hour every Wednesday for the past few weeks and for the next few weeks at least um, to join us and answer those questions. So like I was saying, uh, this is a perfect opportunity to ask us live using the Q&A function. If you're on Facebook, you can comment or we'll be sure to get back to you. If you're watching this as a recording, um, you can also comment on that video and then we'll be happy to reply to that question as soon as possible. Um, otherwise, uh, for social media channels, I do encourage you also to stay connected with us on our social media channels. We are posting regular updates about future webinars, um, activities that we're hosting, and then there will be regular updates. You'll also get a sneak peek as to the student experience and student life at Lakehead. Um, and we, we have certainly a lot of uh, channels and lots of posts from our previous efforts. Uh, and showcasing what campus life is like. So before we had moved remotely, uh, we were quite active in posting about events, of course, happening on campus and different initiatives across campus. So I do encourage you to explore those and learn more about the Lakehead student experience. So the next question that I'm going to address, um, it was a question regarding mechanical engineering courses, software is used, syllabus, all that sort of stuff. Um, so I will actually have our Lakehead experts behind the scenes answer that directly to you um, and then we'll connect you with um, the, the means within the department so that they can provide course specifics. Um, unfortunately, we don't have an engineering expert on here that can speak to syllabus or the exact softwares that you'll use in every single course throughout the four year uh, undergraduate program. Uh, but I do encourage you to look forward to our direct message soon. Um, there's another question here. If classes are to be taken online, what will be done for practical experience classes if there is any, for example, in engineering? So I will pass this one off to Robert to speak to uh, how we are uh, monitoring that situation and uh, kind of what we're looking into in those options. Thanks, Jordan. So obviously, um, you're right, there is going to be an impact in terms of the ability to complete some of the more practical elements of courses and training uh, as part of being online. The really important thing to remember is that right now, realistically, um, you know, we, we do not anticipate being online for a long period of time. As we've already seen in some markets around the world, this is a temporary moment in time and eventually the pandemic will start to wane and we will see a return to more uh, to more a normal life as we would have envisioned it in the past. So this really is a temporary solution to allow students to be able to start their studies, start their academic courses uh, from there. But you are correct, programs like engineering at Lakehead, in fact, one of the really wonderful elements of our program is the amount of hands-on learning that happens. And so what our plan will be is that, you know, we will get through a period of time that will feature online learning, but once we are back in the class, you will be able to still take advantage of all of those online learning opportunities. Um, we will continue to offer uh, the opportunity once you're in Canada to be able to participate in co-op and work internships if they are a feature of your program. So it's not to say that because you, you know, let's say your courses, maybe your courses, some 
some of your courses are online to start. It doesn't mean that your whole program will be. It really is a temporary solution uh, to, to the current situation regarding the pandemic. Um, but as we get closer and as we start to move into the, the upcoming term, we will have a better picture. So it may be that, you know, being in a lab as part of that first year course is just not going to be possible because you're not physically on campus. But once you go into your next semester, if we envision maybe you're on campus at that point, then you will be back in the labs getting those experiences, having all those opportunities as you would normally have anticipated. Um, it's not possible, as you can imagine, to set up an engineering lab in everyone's household. Uh, so, so there are going to definitely be uh, a certain experiences through there. But some of the learning, while you may not be physically doing, let's say an experiment or something like that, there are very unique and different online learning tools that exist out there that allow professors to model things to allow you to see things happening in virtual environments so you know as you can appreciate with the technology that is at our disposal there are still going to be experiences that you can look forward to it may not be the same as being physically in a laboratory but this is one of the sort of those those things that we uh, we are all um, both students professors you know how we how we teach and learn is going to be modified but the key to remember is this is temporary this is not intended that it will be long term. Um, we don't see this as, as, as being a, a forever thing or you know, any significant length of time, provided that people continue to do the things they're supposed to be doing around social distancing. You know, as you've heard from your public health authorities, um, these, these steps that they're asking all of us to take to protect ourselves and our family members, these are really important things to do because if we follow those rules, if we do what we're supposed to do, then we really will see this as a temporary time in our lives not you know a, a lengthy period in our lives so um so again, we are watching, we are looking at alternate ways to still ensure that you're getting that learning uh, and you're still getting the, that, that knowledge and that information through your courses. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, again, while I have you, I'm gonna have you answer a few more questions uh, that are really good ones and I'm so happy that the students are submitting them. If you do have questions, I'll remind you to submit through the Q&A function. Uh, just being mindful of the time. We're at 10.41 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, that's here in Thunder Bay. So we do have about 20 more minutes here on the live. So again, questions, if you have them, please submit uh, to answer them live. And then at some point towards the end of the webinar, we will have to have a cut off from the questions. Um, but the next question again for Robert is from a student with regards to the Masters of Computer Science course um, and whether uh, Lakehead is exploring alternate intakes with regards to January 2020, 2021 being offered, uh, which isn't typically on a traditional school year offered to our students. Yeah, so again, once, uh, so as I sort of mentioned before, but I will re restate it, um, currently all of our focus right now is on the fall semester and what that looks like. We anticipate having some clarity around that in the coming weeks, so not months, but in the coming weeks, we should have um, some, some better information about what the fall looks like. If at the time the fall looks different or for some reason a student cannot start in the fall, um, we will work with them to look at alternate um, start times. So the uh, while we're working on sort of program delivery and what that all looks like, the faculty themselves are also looking at seeing um, what options might be available as well. So all focus is on the fall and you should be planning to start your program in the fall if that is your intention. Um, if for some reason though there becomes an issue um, in the coming weeks we'll have a better picture but we are examining all options we want to in any case help students start as quickly as they can and is as directly in alignment with their current study plan so we will work with students uh, specifically about that but again it's still just a little bit too early but hopefully in the next couple of weeks we will have a better indication of what the fall will look like Awesome. So I'll give uh, Robert a break here from chatting with everyone and I'm going to pass it off to uh, Sue in Graduate Studies. So there's a question with regards to Masters in Computer Science and the conditional offer uh, with regards to official transcripts. So um, I will read the full question and then I'll have Sue answer it. So just so that our viewers understand the, the understanding of the question. So I've received a conditional offer letter for fall 2020 for Masters of Computer Science with conditions to send the official transcripts and proof of degree. Um, they state that they have the official transcript and it says that he or she 
has earned a 214 against the minimum requirements of 200 credits for the award of the Bachelor of Technology Information Technology degree in May 2019. Um, so they would like to know whether that uh, transcript will work for a proof of degree um, and maybe Sue can speak to kind of how we are receiving official documentation and um, probably speak to the fact that each transcript is unique and that we will have to review it either way. Thank you, Jordan. Yes, as Jordan mentioned, each transcript is quite unique. So we do have to review it in order to make a decision. So just based on what you have sent me here, I won't be able to say um, absolutely one way or the other. But we're not trying, just, just when you are, are offered a conditional offer of admission, we are not trying to make things difficult for you. There are some standards at the university that we need these documentations to maintain our standards and our, our audits. Um, when things come to be audited, we have to have all the documentation required. So I just want to make sure that students know we're not trying to make things difficult. We do want to make things as easy as possible for your transition into Lakehead University. So if you do want to email that um, transcript to a gstudent at lakeheadu.ca, I can have a closer look at it and email you directly and let you know what your next steps will be. We are receiving some mail. Um, we go to the university to pick it up um, and we have been processing that. It is a obviously taking a little bit more time. We don't want you to send any official documents unless you do receive that um, conditional offer of admission and we are doing everything we can to process that mail that we do receive. Um, I know that other some institutions are able to send us uh, transcripts electronically now because people are transitioning to kind of options and, and how to help out students. Um, and, and remember, don't, do, do not um, worry, do not stress about this. You do have until the start of classes to provide these documents. I do understand that some students may need this, an unconditional letter, in order to start the visa process. If that is the case, please email us and we will do everything we can to help you along. Awesome, thank you so much. And to echo something that Sue said is the fact that we are working with each individual applicant. So if, if you have any concerns about your personal application, your current situation, given submitting those documents or some of the conditions on your offer letter, um, please feel free to reach out to us. We wanna work with you to make sure that any of those questions or concerns go, uh, go answered um, and that we are helping you through this. We're here to support you through this process. Um, and that's exactly why we've decided to host these daily webinars um, or live events, I should say, to make sure that we are accessible to our students and that when questions arise that we can get you answers as soon as possible. Um, I do appreciate all of the questions we've received so far. Um, I can also speak to the fact that, of course, in some cases, we're not always able to answer the question right here, right now, because it's simply too early. But I want to uh, I want to reiterate the fact that we are dedicated and we're committed to communicating on a regular basis to students and providing those uh, important updates to all of our applicants. <clears throat> so the next question I'll pass back to Robert um, is with regards to tuition fees and um, if there will be any changes to the, the fee structure for online courses. Great, thanks Jordan. This is, a, this is a question that's come up actually a, a few times already, so I'm glad that we received it today. So currently, um, there will be no changes in the tuition fees uh, collected. So um, as part of attending university, whether your courses are online or in class, you are still receiving a very high quality university education uh, taught by fully qualified professors with all the right certifications. The courses you will be engaging in are the exact same courses and content that you would be engaging in, whether whether you were in person or are online. In fact, um, we already offer a number of online courses prior to the COVID-19 pandemic and students were paying the exact same tuition fees uh, to take those courses as well. Uh, again, this is not about, uh, you are not receiving a less than experience. You are receiving a full university experience with full university classes um, with the same knowledge transfer information and learning that you would come to expect. Again, this is also just a temporary time as well. It is not that you are suddenly engaging in a full, you know, 100% online course or program as well. So no, however, there are going to be cost savings. If you are connecting from remotely, you know, you will not be paying the same ancillary fees. So there will be some changes there because if you're not taking advantage of certain uh, infrastructures or things on campus, you wouldn't have those fees. If you're not living on campus uh, because you're taking these courses from home, of course, you would be saving uh, the cost of residence. You would not be paying for meal plans, things of that nature. So, um, so in terms of your 
overall costs of attending university. If for a semester, let's imagine you were at home taking your courses online, the only real cost you would have, of course, is your learning materials and then your actual tuition. But those other costs you would not be incurring. So there is a savings in that respect if you are taking those courses online and are not physically uh, living on campus. So, but in terms of the actual tuition, at this time, the tuition will remain the same. Awesome. <clears throat> and then I'll pass the next question off to graduate studies. Um, the question is, I've taken master's in mechanical engineering course based, um, and they're interested in connecting with a professor within mechanical engineering here at Lakeview University to learn more about the uh, teacher assistance or the graduate assistantships opportunities. Sure. Thanks, Jordan. If you are a current student, I'm sorry, I'm just not quite clear. Um, the graduate assistantship is always handed out right when you receive your offer of admission. So if you did not receive that graduate assistantship with your offer of admission, then you will not be eligible for that for that job. Thank you so much. Um, so the next question I, I will keep it with graduate studies um, is with regards and I don't know to be honest if Sue you can answer this uh, it is asking whether the graduate student association is still running on campus uh, as they haven't seen any recent updates from their platforms or their communication channels um, sure. but maybe in your uh, general knowledge of working with those students you could speak to that. Yeah, so our Graduate Student Association is, is for graduate students and they do a lot of social events. So of course, with the current situation, social events are not happening. I do encourage you to reach out to them. They have an email address that they monitor. It's gsa at lakeheadu.ca and they can let you know what they have planned. They may, have, they may be spending this time planning things for the fall term, um, but they will have it's, with some events coming up once things go back to normal again. Awesome, and I already um, put that email address gsa at lakeheadu.ca in the chat box for those students on Zoom right now. So if you do, uh, if you would like to reach out to the Graduate Student Association and chat with them and see what sort of events they typically host and what they're planning, um, who knows, they could even be planning virtual events to start working with current students on campus that are uh, looking at courses at, a, at an online platform. Um, so the next question, I'll, I'll pass it off to uh, undergraduate studies first, and I'll have graduate studies follow up to it, um, just because there was no clarification on which level they're interested in. Um, they do have a conditional offer letter and the specific requirements for sending transcripts and official transcripts, and how we're working with um, other institutions to receive those on a digital side. Thank you for that question. So from four undergraduate applicants, if you have graduated from either high school or you have a university transcript, we ask that you uh, don't submit those documents until you've actually graduated. I know we have been receiving um, many inquiries about submitting official transcripts that are in progress. However, we don't need documents, uh, we don't need official documents if you are still in progress. We only require official documents once you've actually graduated or if you are a university transfer student that you've completed your studies. Uh, undergraduate admissions at this time we will accept um, emailed copies directly from your institution. For example, Lakehead University, uh, if we were sending a transcript, it would be from a Lakehead University email address at lakeheadu.ca. So if you do have your school, send us an email with your document and it's from a, uh, an institution's email address, we would consider those official. For specific boards in India, if you are a high school student and you've applied for a specific board, there are um, different ways to verify those results online. For example, example Digital Locker for the CBSE board, uh, and we would also accept those as official. Awesome. And just to clarify, Natalie, um, the email that you were referring to that students are using to submit documents is that docs.admission at lakeheadu.ca? Um, yes, they can either send those to docs.admission at lakeheadu.ca or if they have specific questions, if those would be considered official, they can send the intl.admission at lakeheadu.ca. 
Perfect. So I will post in the chat uh, the email that we just talked about, docs.admission. Um, and just to clarify, like Natalie said, echoing what she said at least, um, for students that have final official uh, documents that they would like to submit, they can do it through that email. If you need clarification whether uh, the transcript you currently have will suffice, uh, connect with us at intl.admission at lakehead.ca. So next I'll pass it off to Sue in Graduate Studies to speak to um, how Graduate Studies is accepting um, digital transcripts. So much like undergraduate, we do not want anything um, digital unless you have received an offer of admission and you're trying to meet the conditions of that offer. You can email them to gstudent at lakehead.ca and this has to come, absolutely has to come from the granting institution. So it cannot come from students. It has to come from a legitimate university email address in order for us to accept that as an official document. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, so there's a general question uh, from a student uh, regarding admissions decision for undergraduate studies for fall 2020 faculty of engineering. So I'll let uh, Natalie answer that one and maybe have her encourage what the next steps is in connecting with our admissions team in undergraduate studies to maybe look into your specific application. Thanks, Jordan. So at the undergraduate level, most decisions are out within five business days. However, in specific cases, for example, the Faculty of Engineering, there are instances where the application does need to be assessed directly by the faculty. So if you haven't received a decision and it has been more than one week, it is likely that your application is with the Faculty of Engineering. To see on your account if your application is pending, you can go into your MyInfo account and you will be able to see if your application status is pending. That means uh, if you have applied for engineering that your application is directly with uh, the Faculty of Engineering. And if your application wasn't complete and a decision wasn't able to be made, uh, then we would have sent you an email regarding the missing documents. So if you do have any specific questions and you want to send me an email, I can definitely look into your specific case and let you know uh, if that application was sent to the Faculty of Engineering or if there are uh, any missing documents. Again, the email address is on the screen, intl.admission at lakehead.u.ca. Awesome, thank you so much, Natalie. Um, so just be mindful of time for those of our viewers. Um, we do wrap up at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, so that's a little less than five minutes away now. Um, so I have a few questions open right now. Um, if there's any final question that I do encourage you to submit, I can't guarantee that if we receive all five more questions, we can answer all of them. Um, but the first questions I will actually uh, put back to Natalie again. Um, it is with regards to undergraduate students for engineering with a conditional offer. Um, so the question is, I would like to ask, what if the embassy will start to working on student visas and will I apply for a visa after getting, um, getting that offer? Will I submit my English proficiency to the university? Is that okay? Um, in terms of if the embassy will start working on my visa, I will probably default the, that visa question to Robert or Amanda, but I can definitely speak about the English proficiency. Um, our English proficiency requirements, um, I will submit my English proficiency to the university. Yeah, I mean, definitely if you receive your visa and you don't yet meet our English proficiency requirements, uh, then you can definitely submit those proficiency requirements after you receive your visa. Uh, if you are having difficulties writing an English proficiency test as uh, IELTS and TOEFL and other major bodies are, are not offering the test at this time due to COVID-19. We are currently accepting an English uh, proficiency test called Duolingo. You can view the requirements through our website. That test is completed online, so you are not required to go in uh, like you would need to do for the IELTS or TOEFL. Awesome. And actually, just to clarify, um, I had actually, I had misread the question. Um, so the question was with regarding only submitting that English proficiency after receiving uh, acknowledgement that they will be getting a study permit from their visa processing center. So I think the question has been answered perfectly. Thanks for that, Natalie. Thanks. 
Um, the next question is for graduate studies. It's with regards to submitting seventh and eighth semester uh, transcripts. The student did clarify that it is, to their knowledge, they may only be able to submit uh, screenshots of the transcripts up until now and how that will, how that will play into the course registration for masters in computer science. Sure. So once again, if they are, we will accept unofficial documents. You can upload those screenshots directly to your MyInfo application. If you receive an offer of admission and it's conditional on a transcript, you do have until the beginning of classes in September for us to receive that. So as of now, we do still require official transcripts that may change. Um, if, this, if this situation stays longer, we may have to look at alternate options. But right now, we do still require official transcripts either sent digitally directly from your university to gstudent at lakeheadu.ca, or you can send them via mail when things get back up and running. So as of now, though, for unofficial, we would absolutely accept your seventh and eighth semester screenshots for unofficial students. Perfect. And before I pass the last question off to uh, Sue in graduate studies again, I would just like to let everyone know that in the Zoom chat, I did post the link to uh, our English language proficiency requirements page with the update uh, regarding Duolingo English test. So just like Natalie was talking about, it is something new for Lakehead that we are offering based on the fact that some of those major uh, English language proficiency tests are not available right now due to COVID-19. Uh, so for anyone who uh, is looking to complete that test to satisfy that, that admission requirement, I do encourage you to visit that website. If you do have any questions regarding that, please connect with our uh, admissions teams directly. So the last question is for Sue, uh, and then we will wrap up today's webinar. Um, a student applied for the Masters of Mechanical Engineering um, for fall 2020 and then for waiting for their offer and I was just wondering if you had any clarification on uh, when the faculty engineering will be releasing some more offers or what that timeline and process looks like. Sure. Hi Dinesh. Um, we are actively processing all applications still. Uh, we do appreciate your patience. Uh, all of our engineering and computer science programs are highly subscribed. So you have to understand there are hundreds and hundreds of applications that we are looking at and there are rounds of offers going out. So looking on a positive note, if you haven't received a refusal, that means you're still being considered for admission. And we do know that it's taking a long time and we do realize that people have been transitioning from home. So we're trying to be um, very patient with this process. And I hope to see all of the mechanical engineering and engineering computer science to make decisions by the end of May, early June at the very, very latest. So again, it's on a positive note, if you do not have a refusal for your application, it means you still are in the applicant pool and being considered for admission. Awesome. Well, I want to uh, thank everyone for joining us on today's webinar. Um, to reiterate something that I've chatted about and also to give you more information about some of the other ways that you can connect with us. Um, I do want to chat about social media and the fact that if you do follow us on our Facebook page, which is Lakehead University International, we actually have a group already set up. It is for the incoming class of 2020. Um, as of yesterday afternoon, I believe we were at roughly 190 students on the group and that's quickly growing. Um, I just saw my notifications to approve another seven members onto that page. Uh, so there are a few questions you have to fill out just to clarify uh, when you'll be joining us, what program you're in, and then some more details so I can confirm you're an official applicant and that you've received an offer. Um, but that's a really great opportunity for you to connect with future students who are potentially in the same program as you, looking for roommates, but also uh, people that could be from your hometown or even your home country and you could be connecting uh, before you even make the journey to Lakehead because we understand um, making that connection with students and learning more um, and doing that with somebody can help the process, of course, and make that transition just a, a bit easier. Um, we also have an Instagram channel, it's Lakehead International. Every Tuesday and Thursday we go live at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to interview a current student. Um, and that current student talks about academics, about their program, their student experience, all the fun activities they've been involved in on campus, whether it's um, a simple event like a celebration, a culture day, or if it's a part of being a club on campus or a part of a student society or association. Um, we're learning all about those student experiences and we're also answering questions on that Instagram live. So I do encourage you to tune in every Tuesday and Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Last but not least, we have a Twitter, Lakehead INTL. We're posting on there as well. 
Um, and then our YouTube channel, Lakehead University. We have two international playlists, Lakehead International Lives, where all of our uh, live event recordings do be, they are published there. Um, and we do have the Lakehead International playlist where there's more student testimonials, more videos about Lakehead to help you learn and better decide as to uh, what our offerings are here. Um, on another note, if you are interested in exploring the facilities that we offer as well as the beautiful scenery on campus, uh, you can take a virtual tour, lakeheadu.ca forward slash tours, and we do have our both Aurelia and Thunder Bay campus on there so you can explore academic buildings, residence, uh, the beautiful surrounding area of the campus. Um, and if you do have any questions, of course, feel free to reach out to us. Um, and then I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank our special guests that joined us each week. We have undergraduate studies, or undergraduate admissions, pardon me, and graduate admissions join us uh, to chat and answer your questions. We are also very fortunate to have the Director of International Ro uh, Enrollment, Robert, join us, and Amanda today uh, from the recruitment side. So thank you again for joining us, and we certainly hope to see you again at one of our future events. Thank you.